All right, let's take a little look at isosceles triangles in Euclidean, hyperbolic, and taxicab geometries. So here is the basic construction. Uh, you start with a point, make a circle, pick a point on that circle, uh, which this one is controlling the radius of the circle, and then pick this other point on the circle, and then basically use line segments to complete your triangle. We see that, that A is the center of the circle, B and C are points on the circle, that then no matter how we manipulate this, AB and AC will be the same length, and so we have an isosceles triangle. Now one thing we notice here is that these two angles down here are also congruent. Let's check this out in hyperbolic geometry. Here's the same construction. We start with the point in the center, we create a point here that, that, uh, that's free to move around anywhere we want. Make a circle centered at A and going to B. And then uh, let C be any point on that circle. And now these are isosceles triangles. The two red distances, red sides are the same, same length. Okay, interesting, and let's look at the me angle measures here. They are the same. If I move this around, they're the same. If I manipulate this, these are the same as each other. So we get that same result in hyperbolic geometry. How about taxicab geometry? Again, we take our point here. We make our taxicab circle, which is a... Um, Euclidean square and a taxicab square for that matter. We pick our two points on that circle. I think once again B will help us change the radius of the circle. C then can go around the circle and these are all isosceles triangles. Remember the definition of isosceles triangle is that it has a, a pair of sides that are congruent within itself, right? These sides are congruent to themselves. But look at these angles. This one here and this one here are different sizes. It might be that we can make them the same size, but uh, in general, they're not the same size. Look like those are the same size, but if we go over here, they're not. different sizes for the angles. So in taxicab geometry, we don't necessarily get uh, congruent angles when we get the opposite sides, uh, uh, two sides congruent. But that was the case for hyperbolic and Euclidean geometry. So it looks like we may have a theorem here that that uh, if a triangle is isosceles, then it must have a pair of congruent angles. That theorem would be true in Euclidean and hyperbolic geometry. And then one thing that we have a theorem like that, you should always ask yourself if the converse is true. If we start with a pair of congruent angles, do the opposite sides have to be congruent? So we could construct a triangle based on the angles rather than the sides and make sure that the two angles were congruent and we would in turn we would actually see that the sides are congruent both of these two geometries well we can actually prove this result okay and it's really quite simple proof and it doesn't require any additional construction this proof's going to work in euclidean hyperbolic and also spherical geometry because all it is based on is the one direction is based on the uh, side angle side postulate and the other direction is based on the angle side angle triangle congruence theorem. So once you have that SAS postulate and the ASA theorem, which we've already proved in earlier videos, then you actually have this theorem here as well. So the theorem says a triangle is isosceles if and only if it has a pair of congruent angles opposite the pair of congruent sides. Now it's an if and only if statement, so there are two different proofs here, two different, really two different theorems here that have to be proved uh, separately. So part A, we're given an isosceles triangle ABC. So we can say that AB is congruent to BC. So the red sides are congruent here or here. 
congruence of angles and line segments are reflexive. So angle C is, uh, let's see, I've got this labeled differently here. Let me, uh, let me fix that. Here I've got AC and BC are the ones that are congruent. So the angle up here is center of the circle is C. Let me just double, let me fix my labeling. Okay, now my labeling is, is consistent here. Okay, so it's uh, angle C is congruent to itself. And so what do we have? We have A, AC is congruent to uh, BC. So there's sides that are congruent. We have this angle right here is congruent to itself. And we have this side is congruent back to that side. So what do we see in all of that? We see that we have side, angle, side. But so this triangle is congruent to itself. Now notice any triangle is congruent to itself with the identity mapping. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ABC. That's true for any triangle. But if we get a triangle ABC is congruent to B, triangle BAC in that congruence relationship, it's not just saying these two triangles are congruent, but rather how they're congruent, then that means that this triangle is congruent not with just the identity mapping, but with a reflection around the line between going through C and the midpoint of line segment AB. So that is, uh, this triangle is congruent with the reflection. So uh, by the side angle side postulate, we get that those two triangles are congruent or that triangle in itself. And so by the definition of triangle congruence that has corresponding parts are congruent. So we see that the angle A is congruent to the angle B. The angle B is congruent to the angle A. Of course, C is congruent to itself. So we see that the two angles must be congruent. So that completes part one. If it's isosceles, uh, it must be have pair of congruent sides. In other words, if it has a pair of congruent sides, it must have a pair of congruent angles that are opposite that. Now let's go to the converse. This time we're given triangle ABC so that angle A and angle B are congruent. Okay. Uh, so what do we have? We have angle A is congruent to angle B, but then B is congruent to A because congruence of angles is, is uh, an equivalence relation. It is symmetric. And then we also have this line segment down here. AB is congruent to itself. AB is congruent to BC. Uh, uh, AB is congruent to, uh, I should say, BA. Okay, I need to fix that. And uh, so anyway, we're saying that, that AB is congruent to itself. And these two here, so now notice what we have is angle, side, angle. So once again, this triangle is congruent to itself with a reflection. So that means that the corresponding parts are congruent, namely the sides. So if a triangle has a pair of congruent sides, it has a pair of congruent angles. And if it has a pair of congruent angles, and it has a pair of congruent sides. The congruent sides are opposite the congruent angles. So we see that this result is true for Euclidean geometry. It's also true for hyperbolic geometry. That is, if a triangle has a pair of congruent sides, it must have a pair of congruent angles opposite them. And its converse is also true. If it has a pair of congruent angles in a triangle, then the pair of opposite sides must be congruent. That's true in Euclidean and hyperbolic geometry. It's actually also true in spherical geometry as well. If we basically the same construction there, we have a point, pick a, another point, make a circle centered at A going through B, and then we have uh, this, this side here uh, could be any length, but we, the two red sides must be the same length. The two green angles must be the same measure as well. So it works in spherical geometry. If you notice, our proof only relied on the ASA Triangle congruence theorem and the SAS postulate, those we know are true in hyperbolic, spherical, and Euclidean geometry. So exactly the same proof works in all three of those geometries.
From this, we can next look at equilateral triangles. Uh, a definition, of equilateral, a triangle is equilateral if and only if all three of its sides are congruent to each other. And a triangle is equal angular if and only if all three of its interior angles are congruent to each other. We can use these uh, terms with polygons with more sides as well. A polygon in general that's equilateral if all of its sides are congruent to each other. It's equal angular if all of its interior angles are congruent to each other. A triangle is regular if and only if it's both equilateral and equal angular. Or in general, a polygon is regular if and only if it is both equilateral and equal angular. Well, it turns out that uh, we can prove that a triangle is equilateral if and only if it is equal angular. So if it's equilateral, it's equal angular, thus it's regular. If it's equal angular, it's equilateral, thus it's regular. And so really this is a quick corollary of the isosceles triangle proof. And I'm going to leave that as a task for you to prove on your own.